Last Sunday morning at the Kotel was a typical morning, not a special day in the Jewish calendar. So there was just a regular crowd. It was about 50 degrees, which in Jerusalem is winter time. So people are wearing their parkas and their hats and their gloves. But one woman decided that she was very warm and took off her jacket to reveal she was wearing just a two-piece bathing suit. She didn't have to shiver very long because she was apprehended by the police within three minutes. Why did she commit this action? It was an act of civil disobedience. I agree that you should not necessarily be wearing two-piece bathing suits at the hotel, but she was reacting to the next chapter in the Kotel Wars or whatever, the battle of what is the nature of the Judaism practiced at the Kotel? Is it just men praying communally in an Orthodox style? Or is there room and place for women to gather and pray communally and to share their voice? And as well for uh, egalitarian prayer services. And for a while now, there's been a status quo even the southern excavation, as we call it, Robinson Arch, has been set up as a full platform. I've been there. You, were, you feel like you're at the Kotel. There was a, an agreement in 2016 to make this even more permanent, but it was never implemented because the majority of the Knesset, the government at the time, didn't want to do this. They wanted to keep imposing their own orthodox view on Judaism. Majority rule, no matter what. No checks and balances, no protection for minorities. We grew up here in America, those of us. We're about to celebrate President's Day, another day to recognize really the constitutional balance that we have here. Not perfect. And Israel has tried to build that balance as well. They don't want to be the exact copy of the United States. And perhaps for that reason and many others, they never wrote a constitution. They had kind of these basic laws, a status quo that's existed for 75 years and has allowed Israel to really thrive. But there's another threat, not just the Kotel bill right now. It's the reform of the Supreme Court uh, Beit HaMishpat Halyon is what it's called in Hebrew, where they want to take away what we know as judicial review, where judges hopefully recognizing really the, the, the grandeur of their role can um, say, or judges rather, can say, we, this law is not protective enough of minorities. This law is unconstitutional, shall we say, and the Knesset needs to pass a different law judicial review. The Knesset has the power, by the way, to get rid of judicial review because there is no constitution. However, just the threat of that has led to quite a bit of unrest in Israel. You might have read um, every Saturday night, probably as we're speaking right now, there are protests, mainly in Tel Aviv, but really all over. Last Monday, the day after this woman protested at the Kotel, it was a general strike declared. Um, hospitals gave their nurses and their doctors off. I don't know if the school is closed or not, but really the country came to pretty much a halt and over 100,000 people went to the Knesset to say, we need to change this law. We need to not change this law in this way. Emotions are high on both sides. There's even talk of civil unrest. Our beautiful country of Israel, the state of Israel that we are so proud of. Can you imagine riots in the street? I can't. There's a lot of, 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 of emotions. How do we get out of this? Well, we can look to the Torah for a possible answer. In just a few weeks, we're going to read the story of the golden calf. It's a hard story for me to read. Really, Israel, you didn't have any faith? But we see that just when emotions run high, sometimes we stop to think rationally. 
The Israelites, they are in panic. They're anxious. Where is Moses? He has spent 40 days and 40 nights away from us. And they're afraid that he's not going to come back. And so they plead to Aaron, do something. And Aaron gets emotional and not rational and says, okay, give me your gold, give me your gold. Did he fashion the golden calf? Did it come out magically? That's up for debate. And the text wants us, I guess, to debate that. But then God, God's self gets angry and says, I'm going to destroy this whole people. And Moses, as we know, throws down the tablets and breaks them, powders it up and makes the Israelites drink the golden calf. Lots of high emotions. Everybody all the way up to God. But what happens? There's a calming down and a renewal of the covenant. God reaccepts the people. The people reaccept God. Moses carves a new set of tablets. The Ten Commandments, the constitution of the Israelite people is survived. On Sunday night, in between all of this, between the protest and the, and the strike on Monday, we had the president of Israel, Isaac Herzog, give a speech. Most of us have grown up thinking, oh, the president of Israel has no power. It's just the prime minister. It's almost like the king or queen of England, just a ceremonial head of state. But when the motions are this high, this is when actually the president has leadership capabilities and leadership power to be the president of all Israelis, Jews and non-Jews, right and left, and recognize the fabric of Israel is under threat right now. It's not torn yet, thankfully. It's under threat. And so he proposed that both sides calm down and actually come to his house, sort of the symbol of his leadership, and start to negotiate. It was well received, at least by the people, not so sure about the leaders of the various factions. That is wait to be seen. So I have to end with just hope. On surety, like many situations, but just end with the hope that they will calm down. And I'll end with a teaching of the Talmud at the end of Brachot. Because when I was growing up and learning about Israel, my connections with Israel was about how we are bonim. We are the builders of this land. We are rebuilding it, renewing it after 2,000 years being away from it. And so they quote a line about how the, it's going to be the children that are going to bring peace. And the rabbis say, no, don't say children. Say bonayich. Your builders are ones who are going to build peace in the generation. And then they quote the idea that there is nothing more lovable than peace. And really how we have to seek peace from one brother to another, from one sister to another. And then what we just said before, Adonai owes the Amo Yitain. God gives strength to God's people. Adonai Yivarech et Amo Vashalom. May God bless this nation this state, this land, this people with peace and recognize that if there's peace um, within and peace without, we can really, truly prosper. And let us say, Amen. Amen.